everyone. So today I want to talk a bit more personal. Um, last weekend I got this this lovely little chip. Um, if you guys are not familiar, um, I go to a 12-step program called Celebrate Recovery. It is a Christian-based um, recovery program. So, it's all about Christ and everything. Um, I have other chips for different milestones. But this is my six-month chip. And a lot of people, I think, because I posted it on Facebook, I think most people, I didn't really explain why I go to it, but I think most people think it's either drugs or drinking. But it's not. It's for her tabbits and hang-ups. Um, and I think I talked about it, maybe not on this channel, but in a different channel on YouTube, about my testimony, which is um, I struggled with pornography um, for a long time growing up. And then I had a year and a half of sobriety before I went to Japan. When I came back from Japan, this is uh, the part that not a lot of people know, I relapsed. I relapsed. Um, a lot of things had gone wrong during that part of my life that I couldn't reconcile with God. And so I went back to my addiction, which didn't give me any comfort that I thought it would. Didn't work out. It was a horrible experience. But we could go more in depth about the spiritual side of all that in a different video but I want to talk about hope after relapse um and I think a lot of times when people who struggle with addiction or with these hurts or things that they thought they were over and then they fall back into completely um they it's really hard to get out of and I just want to talk about hope after that and here's some um bible verses here this is proverbs 24 15 through 16 lie not in wait as a wicked man against the dwelling of the righteous do not uh do no violence to his home for the righteous falls seven times and rises again but the wicked stumble in times of calamity and i want to focus on this whole for a righteous man falls seven times um but he rises again so uh, it's really difficult when you go through an addiction and you feel like you're over it completely and then somehow it comes back again and takes over your life you allow it to take over your life and um when I was going through that I was so depressed disappointed in myself I really wanted to die to be honest because the the spiritual oppression that came on after all this was too much for me to take and I could not stop doing it out of my own free will at that point I had been completely stuck I was completely stuck and I would cry out to the Lord, I would cry out to the Lord, cry out to the Lord. But I really didn't want to stop at that point because I was just so broken um, during that whole period. I was completely flat out broken, destroyed, destroyed um, emotionally and felt that this was my only way of feeling any form of love. Um, pornography and um, masturbation, that's all part of... A love addiction so there's something especially for a woman there's something off in the heart really the relationship center when one struggles with this um, especially for a female I can only talk about my perspective as a woman dealing with this um, and um, there's plenty of resources out there for men uh, who struggle with pornography, but not a lot of Christian resources for women who struggle with that. Um, and so if you guys, any of you ladies out there who are struggling with this addiction, anything like that, reach out to me um, and in the comment section below and we can talk. But um, I'm working on getting social media for this channel. But anyway... <laughs> Moving on, um, this whole seven times falling, it's when you get back up, right? I know, I've known people who have fallen, and because they have fallen, they feel that, you know, I'm just going to continue to give myself over to this, because 
there's really no redemption for me. There's no way I can get out of this. There's no way I can do anything about this. And for me, it was especially hard because I was so... Because when I was first delivered from pornography and everything like that, uh, it was a radical thing. The Holy Spirit just completely took it away. Um, and this time I had to go through a 12-step program to get out of it. And for me, that was it was humiliating as a person who you know, was so ingrained in Christianity, brought up in the faith, um, went to a type of Bible school, all this stuff, was working as a missionary, and then to fall back into this, it was so frustrating. It was so, oh, it was humiliating, and, and I had pushed God so far away so that I could cope with all these things that were happening in my life at the time. Um, needless to say, it just kept getting worse and worse. And, um, there's a verse in the Bible. Okay, the reference for this is Luke 20, no, 11, 24 through 26. And basically what it says is when the unclean spirit is driven out from a person and goes through waterless places or, um, dry places. And, um... Then it's like, I'm going to go uh, back to where I came from. And it brings seven spirits with it. Finds that its home was like clean and tidy. And goes and dwells there. And um, the person's state is worse than it was before it left. So, um, and so this was what I actually experienced and we can go into depth of this in a different video but this is what I actually experienced in that whole time but the Holy Spirit my hunger for the Holy Spirit and to um, really be free of this torment was strong enough for me to continue to seek help to get help to go and pick myself up like the righteous man is supposed to do. They get up again. But the wicked stumble in times of calamity. So, so it's both people are going to fall. Both people fall down. For the righteous man falls seven times. And the, the wicked stumble in times of calamity. But like everyone is falling down. But it's getting back up. The wicked don't get up. They just lay there and let things happen to them and not be redeemed. And a lot of times the shame of it all can completely overwhelm you. It overwhelmed me for months and months and months until I really decided, no, I can't do this. I'm going to take a stand no matter the cost. And the cost oftentimes for me personally was my desires to feel loved in a human sense in a physical sense in um in this weird kind of connection sense um and i had to relearn almost how to love Christ and find hope and fulfillment in Christ and I truly truly believe now um the Bible doesn't necessarily say 100 verbatim percent that masturbation is wrong and that specifically pornography is wrong like a lot of times you'll see people talk about how it doesn't verbatim say that but in Matthew it talks about not looking at a woman lustfully because you've already committed adultery with her in your heart. Um, also, we can talk about how um, masturbation and this whole idea of self-pleasure or self-release isn't biblical because the part of sexuality, I believe in Song of Solomon, um, it talks about not awaken love before its time. And so... It's this whole thing about 
it's just a demonic thing because my experience, and I can assure you my experience, with these two things, it brings open doors for demonic spirits to um, have legal right over your life. And um, that can be said with any addiction, really, um, whether it is food addiction or um, drugs, alcohol, smoking, whatever. It gives legal right because it takes so sobriety out of the equation the way that God has created us to be sober in all things. And I can go into a deeper study if that is something that you guys would like to hear. But I just wanted to talk about just this whole blanket thing of celebrating really freedom in Christ and six months sober. Um, it does not mean that I do not struggle or am tempted. I still am tempted. I still... Um, struggle some days are harder than others, but I have really decided full force. I do not want to live like I have lived because it has never worked out for me. And my spirit man was so quenched by engaging in these activities. And no matter the physical release, it's not a good, it, it was never good. It just wasn't. I'm going to be completely honest. It just never was good. So, um, we can talk more in depth about this kind of stuff. If this is what you guys want me to talk about in a future video, more in depth about the spirituality that happens when it comes to addiction, especially sexual addiction, there's specific spirits that are attached to it, um, and all that kind of stuff. But I just want to encourage you guys... That if you have fallen, if you have stumbled, that there is a way out. That you need to stand up again. If you need strength, look to the Holy Spirit. Call on Jesus' name. And then work. You have to put in work. You have to stand up. You have to rise again. You can't just lay there in the dirt, in the mud, in the mire, begging. You have to partner with Christ. It's a yoking thing. It's you and Christ working together to be delivered. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you later.